It's just our opinions. <laughs> Feel free to do your own research. <laughs> Formulate your own opinions. We encourage this. Oh boy. I can already feel that this is going to be a long one today. There's a lot that has been happening in the gaming community lately. A lot of discourse over a lot of viewpoints that are really strange um, from, you know, a lot of uh, content creators. I noticed lately and, you know, even in the past there were there were some some things I noticed. Uh, these these political viewpoints are really extreme and and coming into a space that I think should, should be safe for um, communities of people, all kinds of communities of people. And whatever political viewpoint that you hold, I, 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 I feel like that, that's generally most people want that just a, a, as a baseline. <laughs> maybe some don't, but and, and maybe these are prime examples of those that don't. Well, and that's what we're here to talk about. Because not only are we going to be playing Civilization today, we're also going to be talking about some kind of prominent figures in the streaming community that have been sharing some viewpoints that are shocking, to say the least. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> indeed. Wait, way to jump right in there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a heavy topic. A lot of people are 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 passionate about. I. I typically don't talk about my personal politics because you know this is a video game stream i think the choices in 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 games sort of speak to that <laughs> most of the choices that i make in in games are are from a very certain perspective and that perspective is caring for people considering that they are human beings at the very least yeah. as a baseline i think we just generally been seeing kind of uh, more and more bold, like subliminal and or overt messaging of pretty toxic viewpoints recently. Oh yeah, we're also playing Civilization on top of that. <laughs> just just so everyone knows. <laughs> the, this is also uh, us playing Civilization because I think that it, it makes sense that we would talk about- uh, apropos. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so welcome. And if you want to join the chat, then feel free to share perspectives or input as you wish. And anyone is welcome to join in the conversation in in chat. Uh, well, you're you're welcome to to share your your viewpoints if you're not appraised of the the subject. Um, there was a stunt not that long ago, I guess. You know, we, we could go... How, how far back should we go? Because... <laughs> well... We could start with the elephant in the room of XQC and Aiden Ross meeting... Yeah, that's the most egregious one, I think. Uh, Donald Trump. That's... that. Yeah, that's absolutely... And, like, hanging out with him, too. Not just, like, you know, at the same event. Like, it was intentional to promote him. I mean, you don't wear someone's face on your shirt if you're not promoting them. <laughs> and that says to the greater community, especially those that um, care about the the opinion of that particular content creator, then they might also feel inclined to believe a certain way when it's based on no no facts whatsoever and in fact breeds a culture of uh toxic toxic behavior just in general well and also you know it's also the hypocrisy right like these are the same kinds of individuals who are either overtly or co covertly saying things like keep your politics out of my games and other silly things like that when it has to do with being quote unquote woke or leftist or whatever um and i mean that quote specifically i feel like i think of when moist critical said like games should just be fun <laughs> and it's like that's not really possible for entertainment that's on the global scale i mean there are plenty you can dislike the politics but it doesn't avoid the fact that it's there there, there are plenty of examples out there 
where there's uh, politics in a game or a politics in, in a storyline that um, are, are interesting and can help to understand uh, why that is kind of a narrow thing. I think when people are talking about not wanting politics in their games, they don't want a particular set of ideologies that sounds more like they don't want to be told what to do or how to feel about the world. So they don't want overt political statements within their game. But recently it's been feeling like as things as simple as having a diverse cast or representation of different lifestyles or other things like that or experiences or backgrounds. Those are the things that people are saying are like politics now. It's not like they're mad because there's political party propaganda video games. <laughs> in fact, the ones that seem to be the most militaristic and like propaganda like video games are the ones that are being praised in those communities predominantly. And I'm thinking of the gaming community portion that's kind of adjacent to the manosphere bubbles specifically. Like Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, COD is, I think, a pretty good example, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we decided to talk about this stuff of playing civilization because it just feels so um, kind of maybe ironic, I'm not sure, to talk, critique the choices being made in our world while we're <laughs> literally building. Yeah. Plus, some of the civics in this game are pretty entertaining, I will say. Before I had started moving my character, I had mentioned uh, that quote from Moist Critical talking about how games should just be fun. And I mean, I first saw that clip in a Cavernacle video. And I think that it's such an interesting perspective to think that entertainment in general, specifically gaming, and I feel like I see this in a lot of gaming sub communities who are critiquing the games that they are playing. Uh, I see this a lot in like Elden Ring critique and other things like that. It's like, well, they should just be this. It should just be that based off of what they think is entertaining <laughs> and that doesn't take into account the the art of the narrative or anything like that oh yeah so we have a message in chat sorry i just noticed um chat saying that i i found that the most critical voices of politics in quote unquote in gaming are the ones pushing the most extreme views well yeah and that makes sense right those who feel the strongest about what they have to say are going to promote the loudest, I guess you could say. But I think that the views are like they start really subtly and, and you start with more kind of dog whistle phrasing um, things I see like, I mean, <laughs> the person that comes to mind right now is Osman Gold. <laughs> like he's so like aggressively neutral, <laughs> like you can tell to some extent what his beliefs are but i mean it's it, when someone makes a prediction <laughs> of who they think is going to win an election with very little knowledge of what is going yeah. on in either side then they just see their own community and how their own community is responding and they think oh yeah this is uh, when someone declares that who is going to be a winner, that to me declares their support. I mean, I agree, especially, it, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, this is a, a recent video that was uploaded that we're referencing. So um, it's, I think that it's easy to kind of like blurt out what you're claiming is facts and say, well, it's just facts. Well, it's just facts when really it's your opinion. <laughs> And it's kind of a manipulation tactic, in my personal opinion, to covertly get people to believe what you're believing. Because, well, yeah, that's just facts. It's just facts. You say something <laughs> uh, enough times. It, loud enough. <laughs> it, and loud enough, it becomes the truth. Yeah. Well, your truth, anyway. Well, I mean, <laughs> depending on how hard you push, it can be everyone else's truth as well. Well, yeah, mass delusion, that's, I guess. That's why I think that this is so dangerous. Because when you share an idea, and even if there are people that don't agree with you, like, 
even if you're in the top 1%, you're not the best. That idea is a bad idea to perpetuate. And when you, when you say that, when you, when you think and, uh, uh, that that is a truth, um, a, a, a belief that you should just give up. You're never going to be good enough if, if you're not. And, and you, you know, part of that is, is telling yourself that. And if you tell yourself the opposite, that even though I'm only this far into it, look at how, how much further ahead of these other well, people, like you, yeah, you can but still also, when you're coach yourself into absolutely. But when you have a million or more subscribers and you're ta and, and who knows how many dollars in your pocket and you're telling other people not to follow practicing and trying to do a thing, you're like being aggressively against people um, having interest in being streamers and just degrading people who want to do what you're doing while preaching about how you can tell the freaking future, it seems like. I mean, I know we're specifically focusing on Osmond Gold right now, but I just, I think that it's really a problematic and entitled attitude to approach content creation specifically in this kind of semi-creative realm of gaming that like there's some interpretation around art and how subjective what good or not good is when it comes to games and other things like that um i think it's pretty arrogant to uh act like you are like some kind of oracle of modern knowledge <laughs> <laughs> because, Maybe I'm being a little dismissive, and I'm sorry, but because you're right about some games that, on, honestly, other people were also right about those things. Like, yeah, I mean, when you're making the same calls other people are, and you're just regurgitating the same conversation and saying, "Well, see, I was right too," it's kind of uh, ridiculous. Oh, chat has has shared something. Ooh. Some of the best games have a great story. And it's hard to have a good story without some kind of message. Horizon Zero Dawn yep. was criticized not for quality. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's a dismissal of the nuance of narrative a lot of times for this just entertain me mentality for people who don't want to think about the world unless it's specifically their laundry list of issues that they're willing to and or want to talk about which seem to be predominantly focused on like world war ii <laughs> which is strange why or other militaristic why do we want to go back brotherhood you know what they stuff. didn't have which i'm not saying you, boo on the military I'm you know what saying. you know what they didn't have in that era video game <laughs> You want to go back to then and not have the thing that... Well, I was going to like, say indoor plumbing in some cases. But yeah, sure. Absolutely. If I mean, <laughs> that could be a dream for some individuals. I don't know. That doesn't really seem to matter to some people. I've noticed in the conservative sphere that there's this... Because there, it's so gendered, right? It's so heteronormative. There's um, definite... The, these extreme distinctions. And uh, what was the article... Liz, whatever her name is, I don't, I don't know her name, said that like the top most unattractive oh my God, that's thing right. about ho the most unattractive hobby. She made a list, and the the top <laughs> one was video games. <laughs> the the <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't take this seriously. Like, this is just some random person. I don't really even remember like why her opinion mattered to people. <laughs> That that's got to be a traditional view because I know that there there are quite a few in older generations that feel that way. Yeah. And I feel like there are those in younger generations that are starting to adopt those views as they come into certain spaces, especially those with a lot of privilege. Yeah. I mean, I also think that there's like kind of traditionally been this hating on the playing of video games the interest of playing in video games and it's been hard to find examples of 
characters in media that like video games that aren't also being portrayed with problematic or frustrating or annoying traits that realistically are coded against a variety of different underrepresented communities. <laughs> but I think that, you know, if you look at the stereotypes that have been perpetuated around gamers and, and so on, it's kind of like the perfect breeding ground for like a gamer to incel pipeline. And these creators are kind of feeding that. Um, oh, there's another another chat. I got to read one second. Oh, OK. About Horizon. About Zero Aloy. Dawn. About Aloy. A Aloy's been been used as one right. of those characters that they're like, this is the decline of gaming because this this character does not appeal to to what I find attractive. In, in, and it's like, Ooh, it's a, you. it's a digital <laughs> character. Uh, like what? I just, I think that there's a lot of, well, to be super blunt, misogyny, but like, yeah, there's absolutely. Yeah. But there's also this aspect of like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't say this with a straight face, so I hope no one takes you seriously, but like the vanishing man, <laughs> like, like there's some kind of conspiracy to like erase the white man. And I promise that is just like not a thing. It's just statistics. But like it's because I mean, look at that Osmond Gold video we saw that was like, oh, he's reacting to that crazy right wing video that was like, who killed masculinity in gaming? And it's like, who's masculinity? What what definition of masculinity are you going with? Are you talking about militaristic brotherhood heavy narratives where you you know go and fight with a bunch of other men and like have a big emotionally significant relationship building narrative with other men like what what exactly is your barometer <laughs> for masculinity that's not that's being lost here and I think that that creates a lot of hate towards any female or culturally diverse characters in the last like five years. And actually, it's been longer than that, but that's what I would like to focus on. <laughs> it's weird to me that the, these people are, are blaming the... the like Wonder Bread. <laughs> Sorry, well, the, chat. The, the very companies that are, are making these games just because they... they turned out some really bad games doesn't mean that the message that they were trying to spread is a bad message that that message does not make games bad making creating a woke narrative does not make a bad game i can think of yeah. of dozens of games in the past that well, had diverse casts of characters that were were great and the, the problem is not that the the problem is <laughs> well, most of the time, people who are, are misinterpreting the subtext of these narratives anyway. I mean, I can think of a bunch of games that have really what I think most people would consider, not most people, most people on the center right and further perspective would call something like woke or whatever. <laughs> I feel like games that actually have those really intense criticisms of Western culture are actually the games that are misinterpreted as the opposite <laughs> of what they are, because the subtext and the narrative is completely disregarded to just for what seems like the facade over the top for the that, that's just there for the narrative itself if that makes sense yeah i i mean i'm jumping around a little bit sorry <laughs> well there's there's a lot to cover but, well because there's so many layers to it all and like what builds mm -hmm. these kind of like problematic traps <laughs> chat says say it again for the back <laughs> 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 Well, I don't know if I could say it again word for word, but I appreciate that. <laughs> the the things that um, are enjoyable in our society are frowned upon. Video games are are frowned upon and not by... I think joy the, is frowned upon. <laughs> well, not by the the so-called political party that they, that they think is, is not supporting them. It's coming from their own political party. Like the trad viewpoints are pushing this idea of 
not playing video games, of not enjoying comic books. And you know what? It doesn't matter what age you are. They're stories. Yeah. They're stories. Uh, and it's and pretend, video, video games right? are, are they're, they're, they're games. It's not real. And <laughs> when when kids do the same thing when they play in the backyard and make up stories, it's play and pretend with your friends. So what? There are going to be just a few people that are privileged at the top that that are acceptable to pl- play video games or on a platform. Yeah, at least. on a on a on a platform basis that has to be a job that so, somebody can't just play and enjoy a game. That that's preposterous. It doesn't make any sense. Chat's got an interesting point about um, older hobby. generations, at least, and maybe a, a not a lack of understanding around like video games. It seems like in particular um, because there's a lack of like physical proof or like product for what you're spending your time doing. Which I get. I think that that could be what a lot of millennials and maybe even some Gen Xers grew up with their parents kind of saying is like, it's just kind of waste of time dialogue, which I don't agree with, but whatever. When you, um, when you gender the hobbies too, and you, and you say, well, well. this is for boys <laughs> and that's not, not, not an acceptable thing for, for ladies to do. That is, first of all, messed up. That, that's super discriminatory uh, to, to separate like that. But it's absolutely uh, happened historically. And it is I think, still happening. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think that there's a lot of narrative just in marketing. And when a new game comes out or something like that, how it's marketed, who it's marketed to is really important. I mean, that's true about movies as well. I think that a really interesting example of this, which I love to make, is Jennifer's Body, which was a movie in the mid-aughts starring Megan uh, Megan Fox, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Megan sorry. Fox. I want to make sure I got the right last name. Um, and it's a, it's a great movie. Super good. Personal opinion. Um, but it was absolutely marketed to the wrong demographic. And that was entirely because of how Megan Fox was being consumed by the media at the time. And by doing that, their sales plummeted. And I think that some games... That was really a a movie that should have been marketed towards the um, young women's experience. Oh, absolutely. I I think, you know, to a degree, you, you do have to have an audience for your story. Yeah, but it was marketed as Megan Fox hot. Yeah, no, it was marketed to <laughs> it was marketed to to mainly um, mainly young men. Yeah, and it, it was supposed to be for honestly, it was supposed to be for for young women because it had more to do with um, uh, girls' relationships with one another and at, at a absolutely. And I think that, you know, games are an interesting one of those things, too, where there is this kind of gendered assumption of um, what type of gaming each gender is going to enjoy participating in and what the aesthetic is and all those types of things that go with the stereotypes of the dismissal of the interests of women and girls as well this like oh you like barbie you like pink so you probably wouldn't be into elden ring or something like that and that assumption is at the core of some of the narrative of and the humor of these streamers that market predominantly to young boys so why would you not end up with this slippery slope into incelhood yeah. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, I'm done monologuing for just a moment while I focus on my next turn. <laughs> I think when you have a platform <laughs> with um, a lot of people, millions of people. Um, and you're acting like you don't. And you think you're not um, famous enough to have any influence, then that is dangerous. You don't understand your own power in that case. Or maybe you do, and you're pushing an agenda that yeah, is... Yeah, Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and in influence is absolutely uh, a, a, a form of power. 
as the principal of Petty University says, it's not drama, it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, for anyone who doesn't know, that's a swoop reference. We stand swoop. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> no, swoop's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I think that, you know, when you have, honestly, any platform, but especially when you're getting into the hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers, Especially if you know that your target audience is probably um, at least relatively young and uh, kind of impressionable. And like, I don't know, it's I feel like there's some responsibility and awareness. And, and if there's that's assuming the benefit of the doubt and assuming that there's not intentional um pushing of of wanting people to follow that kind of agenda and behavior i mean misery does love company but <laughs> i don't know it's hard to say if there's like you know it's hard to to, to to call intent specifically but i think that when you are making commentary about things like parasocial relationships or um, other social dynamics that affect your audience, then you know you're aware of. Um, oh, I did not mean to move that. No, chat responded unit. to your Jennifer's body comment at the Jennifer movie. I think that sometimes media movies, games, uh, etc., producers try to almost trick a particular group uh, I can see that to um, in all uh, to be exposed to an alt view and so I think in it some usually cases, tanks on release yeah I think in some cases that could be true in, in the case of Jennifer's body um, it's so there's a creator um, Amanda the Jedi who did a great uh, breakdown of Jennifer's body and there's also quite a few other creators who have talked about the <clears throat> poor choices involved in the marketing where um, the marketing team pretty much went against the director's wishes and um, followed feedback from so they, they showed it to a few different um, what are those called focus groups so when it's a small group of people and, and some of the criticisms that they received from boys was more boobs spelled in funny ways so you know um and and the the produce the marketing managers who were responding to the um director's request to change the marketing responded with things along the lines of jennifer or i'm sorry uh with megan fox hot so you know i'm I, I feel like in this case, at that point in time, this was post Transformers car scene, whatever the freaky frag that was. Yeah, it was um, really soon after it. Too. And they were pretty aggressive and egregious about how they were treating um, Megan Fox in particular. I feel like got it really bad. And um, that just, you know, how that movie tanked um, was really. In, in effect of that and, and I think that you know there are still I, I think it's super underrated but that's kind of a side point um, <laughs> so I think that with <laughs> yes cringe face chat exactly very cringe face so I think that part of this is like the concept of like the entertainment industry as a complex and how messed up it is and broken it is and blah, all of that. Sure. But a big part of it is also, you know, to quote the lovely Bailey Sarian, uh, people need to get better I idols. <laughs> like people, the viewers need to make better choices of who they want to watch too. And, and like, I think the problem in the case of, of streamers, like, we've been talking about today um <clears throat> is that there's this kind of camaraderie in 
loathing that happens, I think, with a lot of people who feel, um, I don't know, they feel disenfranchised, whether or not they are, I guess, is kind of up for interpretation and, you know, socioeconomic studies. But um, <laughs> regardless, they, they feel put out. So, you know, I think that can be acknowledged that there is a group or a community that feels disregarded and, and I'm not saying that you know young men aren't kind of disregarded societally but they're not really taught better either in a lot of cases and I think that having some better role models around what um, productive caring successful I mean not just successful in like a monetary sense but like socially able to grow as a person kind of what that version of masculinity looks like um is kind of lacking right now in in a lot of streaming spaces but particularly gaming I feel like is kind of um some people have leaned into some of the more problematic stereotypes that exist around boys and nerds and other lovely gendered things like that personal opinion <laughs> I mean, the intersection is weird there. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the Venn diagram, the overlapping, like, video oh. game gym bro yeah. <laughs> is a thing. And I didn't, I didn't know that for a long time. It's a newer thing, yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Um, when I started getting into World of Warcraft and I um, started looking up videos um, about World of Warcraft content and like most of the PVPers were like ripped <laughs> gym bros. Odd. And I was confused. <laughs> I wonder <laughs> like, where that shift what? started because I feel like, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, that wasn't really the stereotype that people would have associated with gamers. Absolutely like, not. It was kind of the opposite. In fact, I feel like there was a lot of, uh, you know, jocks making fun of the nerds kind of stereotypes in society, even just 10, 15 years ago. And now there's, is that a Call of Duty repercussion, you think? Or like, I think that it, it could be those kind of military heavy you know, I think storylines. You know, I think it, it, it's just a natural consequence of video games in general, because one thing that is built into video games is advancement. Yeah. And I think that self-improvement is something that if if you play a lot of video games, especially those that give you level up options and whatnot, your your concept of how 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 you can translate that to your own life eventually come into play. Well, and I think that there's there's a, there's a healthy way to embrace that and there's there's an unhealthy yeah. very unhealthy way. <laughs> many many unhealthy ways that um I think that there's also this aspect of the influx of the, you know, like body image affects everyone. It's not just those who are socialized female, like it <laughs> body image affects everyone. And a lot of main characters in video games are particularly like um, unrealistically depicted physiologically, I think both women and men. And I mean, look at all of the funny conversations around snake or whatever and the <laughs> snake's cake and all snake's that cake. stupid joking Kinky stuff snake. like all of that is still relevant to this discussion of the impact of body image and what's normalized of of just being a human and and why does you know whether you have a six pack or an eight pack or an unrealistic you know six foot twelve <laughs> and i know that that's stupid but you know what i mean like i just there, and I feel like it kind of correlates with the influx in the mid aughts, uh, late aughts, like the tens, and so of the kind of like pickup culture, mewing, the manosphere oh, the stuff, and the high value man, gross stuff, and every and like all of this other weird kind of like deeply misogynistic things that are now almost cannibalizing their own audience. It's pretty, it, it's an odd kind of social concept to think about for me. It's weird. Um, oh, there's a thing in the chat I'm going to read really quick. Go right ahead. Um, chat thinks that the, the decline in education over the last 40 years that helped drive already repressed men and boys to not have the intellect capacity to handle 
intellectual capacity to handle much less enjoy more nuanced varied stories interesting i think it's also you know kind of a standard of um kind of the balance of imagination and emotional regulation <laughs> like you know these are things that humans have to be taught how to do and and i mean not imagination that that just comes naturally to a lot of people but um emotional regulation and if you're rage quitting things because you can't see the nuance past the angie then you know that's that's an example of someone who's not going to see the importance of a story because they're too focused on their inability to master a thing that they're not pre like dedicating to or whatever or maybe they're dedicated to it and they just need to do something different <laughs> it's, it's okay to just be bad at things too <laughs> well also I have to wonder what the personal dialogue these people have to perpetuate these these ideas because it's like I don't think that one should listen to those ideas. I think that these these people I think these people need some help. <laughs> um, yeah. I, whole, uh, oh. Chat says the whole incel red pill movement uh, oversimplifies life and social interaction, which makes it appealing to people who are looking for answers to their life problems. Uh, without a lot of thought and self-work. I mean, the thing is, they are doing self-work. They're just doing a particular kind of self-work. Some of them are. Some of them are doing it. And this is where the overlap of intersection of like Jim Bro and people that that have a hard time self-improving, where there's sort of an overlap there. Well, I mean, there's also been a, a large influx in like the life coach kind of like grifting <laughs> behavior to teach other men how to become more whatever i don't know how to even pretend like i know what their dialogue is but i like, i could tell you because you know because <laughs> your algorithm sends it to you whether you like it or not yeah unfortunately <laughs> because i select the mailbox on on the uh on, curse on you the, box what, what's your gender <laughs> then they, they See, send, you must like this entire rabbit hole yeah you must like the manosphere right because you're because you're, you're a, a man, man. <laughs> no not a fan um actually you know i not to totally derail but i do want to plug a documentary we just watched recently yes please where um swoop on youtube uh, recently did a documentary about just pearly things great documentary as are all of swoops i will die on that hill um <laughs> but uh very uh insightful very uh lots of good information in her docs around this nuanced discussion of the line between this kind of i'm gonna call it exploitative behavior of vulnerable communities like young men and boys and also young girls who want the validation of said men and boys uh, and really just feed into the insecurity of untreated trauma, if we're being super blunt. I mean, <laughs> I mean, among other things, not just trauma, but it's, I feel like that's a big part of it. But there's a lot of other stuff and layers and intersectionalities of each person's identity that I feel like people aren't always willing to, like, face unless they're, yeah. unless they're sharing it in, like, a, using it to build community with others a lot of people use their their feelings of disenfranchisement to bond with others within their sub communities and i think that this is a case where a lot of people get drawn in by that blame others for your discomfort behavior that goes with all of the rhetoric that's in that kind of like those sub communities, especially in the manosphere red pill kind of vortex. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that every single one of the streamers we've talked about or other people that I feel are kind of problematic would necessarily consider themselves a part of those communities. But if you're using the dog whistle phrasing that the rest of the community is using, and if you're profiting, uh, profiting off that audience then you are a part of that community <laughs> sorry chat's funny yeah i think that you know that's kind of that sentiment is absolutely a part of the kind of like 
toxic manosphere dialogue. But it's also kind of interesting because there's also this kind of idea that the only space to actually share your opinions, quote unquote, authentically or transparently is with other men, which I just think is a really interesting nuance to all of this. That there's obviously some belief of a lack of safety of, of being able to share oneself with women. Like, <laughs> imagine that. Some men probably feel like women aren't safe either. Because they know because, their mama would kick their ass. Well, not just that. It's also because there are also <laughs> male... <laughs> well, no, there are also men who have dealt with unfair circumstances, ab abuse, other things like that, that cause them to sure. be distrustful of other people. And if you feed on that, instead of recognizing the psychological support that's needed to uh, exist in a peaceful space, then you're just perpetuating um, the discomfort of existing. <laughs> the, 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 the generational trauma. Of, well, yeah, that too. And it, and it <laughs> continues. It continues because, uh, like, it, if we look at the... Yeah, uh, Chad made a really good point. Not just other men, but men that agree with you. It, Sorry, continue. Yeah, not, like, the, the continued picking on uh, different... Not, not only just groups of people, but generations of people. Like, that these things these people that have tons of money it it's easier for them if there are fractured groups of people and there's no cohesion because they can get get away with a lot more absolutely let's see here chat says uh yeah i don't understand the choose the bear comment okay Sorry. yeah but i <laughs> Sure. Yeah, actually, I, I don't understand that reference either. Honestly, men are just as afraid of other men as women are just for different yeah. but parallel reasons. Uh, the traumatic stuff that <laughs> men do to each other is uh, just gross. Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly. Yeah, I was reading that when we were on our break. Um, I just didn't understand the um, also choose the bear. I, I'm curious what that what that means. But you're absolutely right about the other the other comment. I mean, that's what in, inspired me to take karate classes when I was a kid. Learning self-defense, knowing how to protect oneself, especially from, you know, in in those stranger danger situations. It doesn't matter where you're at or who you are. When you're a kid, you're vulnerable and having the ability to protect oneself is is a great thing to, to absolutely know. i think that you know that is kind of an interesting like kind of juxtaposition to these online voices that we've been talking about because you know these a lot of these streamers do pull a younger slash child audience that is pretty vulnerable and there's a lot of disregard of how popular they are and when you don't have like emotional and psychological manipulation is much more difficult to understand um, when you're younger than physical unsafety. Like it's a lot easier to tell I'm like, I feel physically unsafe than uh, to understand manipulation. And so I think that there's a lot of online personalities and not just streamers and gamers. That's just our particular bubble that we've focused on. But a lot of other content creators do the same kind of problematic stuff. Um, again, it's going to circle back to see any swoop doc ever. Uh, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> I think that because I'm not even going to pretend to be an expert on, on all of those stories. But um, I think it's really important to recognize that, you know, there's a lot of power dynamics in these large creators just sitting on screen for hours at a time saying whatever they want <laughs> no fact check no statistics no sight in your sources i know some have like a bazillion tabs open and they might click back and forth between their tabs real fast and like see on this website and see on this website but that's that's not the same as like transparent journalism <laughs> so you know i feel like there's some some questionable ethics happening here that that really um, can put audiences kind of um, at a disadvantage at best and in danger at worst. Yes. 
Um, I'm going to read chat real quick. Oh, uh, this is the, the also choose the bear comment. So chat says it was a trend for a while to ask if you'd rather be alone in the woods with a bear or a man. <laughs> and a lot of men were shocked when the majority of women chose the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that completely. That actually explains quite a few shorts that I didn't understand. Okay. Wow. The moment when a trend from a year and a half ago clicks. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> okay, that, is, that was really funny. You're right. Interesting. That's that's pretty funny. I missed that entire trend. Oh, that Stanzi short makes so much more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Another great comedian creator, by the way. Uh gonna keep on throwing out the, <laughs> those recommendations in the efforts of get better idols <laughs> yeah we went we went to one of our live shows it was Dude, really good. that show was so good it was um yeah very good very funny questionable opening acts but that's not her choice <laughs> personal opinion <laughs> i mean <laughs> just saying yeah um but that's a locational thing I, I mean every show that she did on that tour would have had a different opening act so that's sure kind of irrelevant yeah. <laughs> realistically to her show itself um I, lo I thought it was great wow i think i just discovered another civilization yeah i did all right that is quite the outfit for the uh ancient era but sure yeah hey buddy sure why not <laughs> yeah we can do waistcoats and uh what, where are we at? 1720 BC. BC. This is 1720 <laughs> BC, BC but not that, uh, AD. That I think pocket you watch and waistcoat is absolutely uh, historically accurate. Get back in your time machine. <laughs> also, just I would like to make a little note on historical accuracy. <laughs> um, I don't remember what the game was we were talking about earlier using historical accuracy as an excuse for poor representation of women <laughs> while having alchemy in their game just felt the irony of that was worth sharing with everyone alchemy um, healing potions yeah specifically, specifically not um, i think if if you ask the question oh yeah, I, I think if you ask the question like well what's wrong with having representation for all of these different people what's wrong with having protagonists that are like this or what's wrong with creating safe spaces for these groups of people? And the response is, well, it's boring. Then <laughs> you're a maniac. <laughs> I mean, the people who say that have given plenty of other examples of why they are, uh, we'll say, unreliable narrator narrators. <laughs> <laughs> to be gentle about it. But, like, I think that the audacity to be mad about other people being represented after decades of like copy and paste protagonists <laughs> like can anyone tell me exactly what chris redfield looked like no not exactly <laughs> actually it's funny funny you should say that he was actually constructed from a bunch of generic <laughs> um male characters uh jill jill valentine was based on one person, a specific actress played Jill Valentine, and Chris Redfield was based an on... An amalgamation. An amalgamation of different... Ah, uh, see, and I didn't even plan for that to be quite so on the nose, but it's, it's wonderful. I love yeah. it. I'm still waiting for chat to tell me what... <laughs> Who? What did Chris Red... <laughs> Chris Redfield from... <laughs> from, from, that's uh, funny redfield uh from uh, resident, evil. resident evil the very first resident <laughs> evil game redsfield Redsf chris, <laughs> chris redsfields redsworth <laughs> what do you look like uh everybody everyone everywhere all at once <laughs> exactly who no one specific no they, they just it was just a, an amalgamation of different yeah think like male if you asked ai to create your generic white man that's like kind of how they ended up with chris redfield i'm sure that there were as a more complex process to that i'm not quoting anything i'm just yeah anyway explaining <laughs> 
if you took Ben Affleck, Tom Cruise, <laughs> uh, Keanu <Batman>. Reeves. <laughs> So all the Batmans, I mean, and, and all the Batmans, <laughs> all the Batmans, and you blended them together, um, then you would get Chris Redfield's. Oh, honestly, Chris Redsworth's. I would like to just completely, just one hundred percent derail this uh, subject matter to the most glorious thing that came out of the production of Twilight was Robert Pattinson just completely dunking on Twilight through the entire press tours, all of them. It was great. It was phenomenal. And I only thought of that because he is also a Batman now. <laughs> One yeah, of the I guess you could put him in the into the cre, uh, cre, uh, Chris Pool, too. To the Chris Pool. The Chris Pool. Wow. <laughs> Deadpool wow. variant. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Either. Chris Pool. Take all the Chris's in the world. Put them into a Chris blender. A Franken Chris? A Franken Chris. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm quite a fan. That's hilarious. Um, if anyone's seen American Horror Story Coven, they make a Frank and Chris. Um, in case that's entertaining to you. <laughs> Just so you know. It's more like a Frank and Chad, but which, by the way, is also a very good show, but a questionable season. Not sure how I feel about Coven overarchingly, but that bit was funny. The American Horror Story Coven? Yeah. I Hotel is definitely my favorite Oh, season. God, it's so much. But yes, it is good. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot. It is a lot, but it's so good. <laughs> it's so well acted. Yeah, that's true. As uncomfortable as it made me, it was a very good season. Frank and Chad, that's actually... Frank and Chad. A little terrifying. Um, yeah, well, it, it was in the show American Horror Story, so it's on brand. Horrifying. Um, and it was, realistically. It's Evan, one of Evan Peters' characters. Oops, spoilers from something from 10 years ago. <laughs> All the Chads just equal Chuck Bass. <laughs> oh my god. Chuck Bass is already evil. He's just rich. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like the level up name of chad chuck it's not <laughs> the trail we blaze it's not the abbreviation it's like you know pokemon it's like and chads are like pokemon i think that's a questionable P pichu and pikachu it's like chad brad and thad and chuck bass <laughs> in between oh my gosh i actually just <laughs> read an entire reddit thread about debating Chuck Bass's morals, and it was pretty entertaining. The mental acrobatics were quite amusing, I will say. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, that character's from Gossip Girl. <laughs> Chuck Bass. The only difference between Dexter and Fifty Shades is like, well, I mean, the only difference between Fifty Shades and uh, Criminal Minds is money. I don't know about Dexter specifically because I haven't watched Dexter. I feel like that adds an extra layer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I will give credit where credit is due. Christian Grey is not a murderer. He's just a little sociopathic. I'm not defending the character, by the way. I don't like the book. Just whoa, 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 wait, what? Just compare. I'm responding to chat. Chat said, I mean, the only difference between Dexter and Fifty Shades is money. And I said, well, technically, I think the only difference between Fifty Shades and Criminal Minds is money, but to be fair, Christian Grey isn't a murderer. Um, and Fifty Shades has its problems, but I feel like closeted murderer is a little bit more problematic than closeted control freak. <laughs> Dexter's supposed to be like an anti-hero character, I think. He's supposed to be like... Really? Yeah. I've so, never watched it. Sorry. So he... He's <laughs> he's a, bl a blood spatter investiga investigator oh, right. for crime scenes, but he and also unalives people. Well, yes. He uses the clues that he finds on those crime scenes to track down the people who committed the crime Gosh, intentionally. Yeah. So he he's like the the slayer of the slayers, if you will. That makes me think of <laughs> the Shia LaBeouf movie from the early aughts. Holes. <laughs> Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Oh, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. Though I did see the Shia LaBeouf and Sia 
a music video pop up not too long ago, and that still makes me uncomfortable with the whole Maddie Ziegler shit. Anyway, that's not the point. I want to talk about that. <laughs> that's not helpful. But we can talk about it if you want to. But it's all. I mean, I mean, it's all in that same vein. I of feel weird, like weirdness. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I feel like there are many other creators that have done a much more thorough oh, sure, yeah. job of researching those types of things. I feel like even, I don't know, I, I keep name dropping Swoop and it's just because I've been watching a lot of her docs recently. <laughs> but I feel like Swoop and, and a variety of other creators have made a lot of really interesting content about Sia's questionable relationship with um, things, Maddie, Ziegler, Ziegler, whatever, from Dance Moms. The fact that Shia LaBeouf was in that music video just kind of always made me a little uncomfy because I think she was like, I don't know, 12 or 13. Oh, you know what? Actually, instead of just talking out my ass, I'm going to... Yeah, you, you can... You, you got a, com <laughs> uh, a computer right there. One of the internet machines. You can look it up there. Okay, so... Oh yeah. What you you did your you did your Google yes, search? I did. What is? And I feel just as confident as I was before saying this. She was ten. Oh God! Wow. <laughs> when she danced in the in that music in video. Music video when she danced in the nude bodysuit. Whoa! With Shia LaBeouf. She was ten dude. years old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Questionable relationships. I wanted to look it up and make sure I wasn't being un you know unfair in my in my commentary. It's the Challenger music video, by the way, if anyone was curious, the Sia video. But yeah, so I think that uh, Swoop, among other creators, have done a lot of content around the like that relationship with Maddie uh, Ziegler and Sia. Mm. Yeah, that's one of those weird, makes me uncomfy things that, I mean, just like all of those other exploitative child star situations that have come up but i think that you know it might seem off topic but all of these things kind of interlock with this like acceptable problematic behavior that partic and i'm focusing like, on american culture just because that's what i am familiar with i have an example yeah like right ahead. um dr disrespect <laughs> Yeah. Like, so how, how anyone can still be a fan of someone that did that. He also, like, deleted some of the messages of apology. So that's not a good look. Like, I, I, I don't know. They're, they're fans of people that will just do... Yeah, diehard fans of a lot of different problematic people. <laughs> these extreme mental gymnastics to... Yeah justify yeah everything that yeah. they do even the heinous crap especially yeah. the heinous crap jeez like I don't, I don't i don't understand why why that well i think that a lot of people are like uh kind of let the worst parts of themselves come out on the internet because there's this um there's this, I don't know if, I mean, most people have probably heard of Simon Sinek, but um, he, he wrote this book called uh, Leaders Eat Last. And uh, in part of it, <clears throat> he talks about um, how the internet really, and, and other people have talked about this too, not just Simon Sinek, but um, this is where I just read this recently. Um, he talks about how people are far more willing to say and um, behave in ways that are not just problematic or hurtful, but are also completely out of character for how they would act in person if they were forced to communicate with um, the people that they're talking to online in person. There, that um, right now separation. I, I want to make a, I want to point uh, well, put a I in that as a caveat. Right, right. The culture right now is like that. Sure, that can shift. Well, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Of course, uh, technically speaking, I'd like to come back. <laughs> reality to is a combination of choices, but <laughs> but I think that um, like the this it, it kind of goes to like the parasocial like which I feel like I bring that up because uh, Osmond Gold is kind of notorious for being like I don't want to encourage parasocial relationships, um, but still. Um, 
behaves in ways where his intention is to influence his audience and and to influence your audience you have to build an emotional relationship with them and i think it's irresponsible to ignore that and to not acknowledge that you hold um influence and and that you um have an impact on on the people that are watching your content especially if you are looking at your analytics and you're seeing that a lot of those people tend to be children or in the younger brackets that could be more impressionable i just i personally think that there should be some responsibility there but saying that you don't want something to happen doesn't mean it's not happening (laughs) right like saying that well well, i don't want this this certain behavioral pattern to happen i don't want to to add to parasocial relationships well those you can't stop that from forming because there's there are some people that are just more prone to that no. sort certain you, behavior regardless so why not just make a better impact because those people are gonna gonna follow what you say and it's that just puts it on that individual to be responsible at how they communicate with their audience and the messages that they're portraying as not just as what they're promoting, but also what they're portraying as normal, what kind of humor they're portraying, other things like that. Um, Sorry, I completely missed that there's like five messages in chat. I've just been going. Yeah. (laughs) My bad. Um, insert the Shia LaBeouf song here. Okay, that was in the, do the creep. Um, hundred percent agreed. The keyboard is both a sword and a shield for the worst. I think that this Whoa. civilization is in our other game as well. We've never had this uh, natural wonder before. The Bermuda Triangle. What? Yeah, that's pretty. cool. Crazy. I didn't even know that this was a thing. Wow. That's really cool. I didn't know that the Bermuda Triangle was a world wonder. <laughs> I love the stance they're taking. <laughs> Talk about being political. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm done. <laughs> it's just, That's just a conspiracy. Jesus. Just a conspiracy. Conspiracy. Um, whenever I think about the Bermuda Triangle stuff now, whenever I see anything like that, I think of that, uh, crazy TV show on Netflix, uh, 1899. I don't want to give any spoilers in case people go watch it, but it's freaking weird. (laughs) It's very mind bendy. Uh, dark fantasy, I guess you could call it. Ooh, um, that even looks pretty crazy when you're not next to it. The looks like the Triforce. <laughs> I've got that really weird cowboy song stuck in my head right now. <laughs> Butterbarn? No. <laughs> what cowboy song? Please um, tell me what, what you mean by that cowboy song. There's so many to choose from. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> the one from that Fallout short. Oh my god. The parody yeah song. yeah that was pretty silly Ooh, lolly ooh, lolly life's a nightmare <laughs> that was really funny yeah yeah um <laughs> that's really funny and also accurate well <laughs> the, you see <laughs> when you peel the veil back on the video game community <laughs> and you see just how <laughs> messed up it is it's no different uh, than other communities. And you, you know, what's what's funny is like a, a lot of the, the main companies that people have pointed out that like they think are these like very in agreement with these masculine, so-called masculine viewpoints. I don't think they are. I think they're, <laughs> they're petty and misinformed. Like FromSoft or... I'm sorry, I got zoned out because I was reading a thing. But Well, a lot of the people that have these viewpoints that these certain gaming companies cater to their their views which is misinformed and uh silly goose they're just perpetuating their (laughs) own 
uh, using someone else's art to perpetuate their own propaganda, which... I mean, these are the same people who are profiting off of a lot of reaction content right now. When you look at things <laughs> that Miyazaki has said about how you treat people, um, it is in conflict with what the these um, uh, Manosphere people perpetuate. Um, for the sake of anyone listening, can you remind me who Miyazaki is? He's the game designer of uh, the Dark Souls franchise and Elden Ring. Right. Thank you. Sorry. I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. Uh, We've CEO talked about a lot of different people. <laughs> from software. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm not that great with names. <laughs> the political views that they actually are presenting it, through their medium, like Hideo Kojima and Miyazaki, let me refresh and get back to the <laughs> topic i got derailed too sorry <laughs> um is that the, the the views that they have are actually far more progressive than than these these people try to perpetuate the evidence is in in things that they've said in interviews miyazaki has quoted satori iwata from who used to be uh nintendo's president vice president Pre pre I think president. Uh, he quoted Satori Iwata saying that people can't produce good artwork if they are afraid for their jobs. So he was saying that in reference to taking a pay cut so that there weren't any mass layoffs. Wow. So that's the sort of philosophy that Miyazaki is working with. And that's not the same philosophy that these people are perpetuating in that are basically worshipped on in, in video game communities. And, and Hideo Kojima has used a lot of Metal Gear Solid storylines in order to communicate a lot of uh, ideological views he does not agree with within Western culture. And yet, <laughs> and yet that's one of the, the franchises that is like being co-opted by kind of more conservative perspectives saying as it that it's like representation for them, which is well. I have to go back to the the cake of the issue um, <laughs> because I, I, I have to re, uh, bring up the statistic of when, whenever there's some kind of um, Trump rally. Uh, Ooh, yep. Whenever there's a Trump rally. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Grinder crashes. <laughs> Grinder crashes. Every time. RNC convention, Trump rallies, pretty much any time that there's a big um, like conservative political gathering, um, Grinder has issues functioning and or crashes because of overuse. So they want their cake <laughs> and they want to eat it too. But Quite no one literally. to know about it. Yeah, I it's it's pretty it's the hypocrisy and delusion for me. Yeah, like, the delusion so land is strong. Crazy. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> it's, it's it's really strange. The the, I mean, the the how can you live like that? How can you live your life in in a in in a cycle of self loathing and and the mental gymnastics someone has to do <laughs> in order to to really believe their own lies in in a in a situation like that is yeah crazy well i mean i think that you know there's a lot of conflict w within oneself when when there's a belief in um policies that and or social viewpoints that disenfranchise oneself <laughs> and i think that a lot of times the people who are loudest about supporting these pretty harmful perspectives are actually ones people who are privileged enough that they're not going to be affected by the things that they're preaching about all that much and i would also like to note that you know we we, we recognize that these streamers are people yes absolutely 100 percent. but every single channel that you have is a business it might be your name on that business 
or your username or whatever, but it's a, it's a business. It's a one person slash team business, just like any other corporate entity. So, you know, I think that it's important to remember that all of these content creators are assuming they're monetized and, or were, and, or intend to be, then they're profiting off of these perspective and audiences and, and so on. This isn't just like someone inviting their friends over to hang out with them. They're, it's like, it's more like a Tupperware party. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, you can come over and hang out, but you probably should buy something too. And that buying something is your view. Round two. Electric Round boogaloo. two, electric boogaloo. <laughs> I think one of the people that we haven't really talked about that much yet is uh, Dr. Disrespect. Mm, yes. And I think that, you know, with everything that's come out about, about him, I'm, I can't understand why he would continue to is, be so stubborn as to try and maintain a platform. Is he still on his like extended vacation or is he trying to stream again? No, I think he's trying to stream again, but I think he was trying to stream on like kick or something like oh, that. Oh, gotcha. But I don't know. I think that, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience watching his content because I was never the target audience, uh, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> in my opinion. But what I what I have seen and like preparing for this and stuff like that, like I, I feel like overarchingly there's a lot of kind of covert uh, manosphere phrasing and just general kind of questionable behavior when it comes to like talking to audiences and I mean obviously the allegations or whatever they may or may not be I don't know specifically and I don't want to overstep there <laughs> I mean I he, he was he was I think he was talking with a with a minor allegedly allegedly and it was <laughs> not a, it, it was inappropriate conversation Gotcha. I think that's what we can say. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I think that it's important to recognize the, like, abuse of power there. And there have been other, over the last year or so, I feel like there's been quite a few really large creators that have younger audiences or minors in their audiences that have been being called out for this really problematic, like, exploitative behavior. And I'm trying to pick my words for the sake well, of, the, you know, YouTube overlords. <laughs> it's it's in their their personality and how they portray that. Like, uh, you know, the the attitude that that they bring. I mean, you, you could tell in his name. It's Doctor Disrespect, right? I mean, like, that's one of the things that kept me from ever having interest in, you know, really knowing much about his content. To be totally fair. Um, but I just thought it was a character, you know, I thought, I, I thought he was just too. doing, doing, doing like a bit. Yeah. And I, I, and for the most part he was, but that doesn't, that doesn't change what happened. But I mean, at what point is the, like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm a <laughs> asshole and I know it <laughs> true like personality type not really attractive anymore like I don't mean that in like a like in the social context attractive like why are people still a fan of that behavior it's because these people don't seem to know where the limit is and by exploiting that fact they're like pushing their their fans into this this realm of just believing what they because we know that that's that, that's a a thing that that people will fall for yeah um uh, unfortunately it's not everyone but it, it's 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 people that are are particularly vulnerable that don't really have a community yeah and they feel like this this is their community these are the people that i'm they I'm understand supposed to be. my experience too. And that's why it's so important for these content creators to understand that they can't control the parasocial aspect of those relationships. Well, yeah. And, and also, you know, I think that there's this aspect of like, um, 
if you say something with enough confidence, people are going to just assume that you're right or that you're talking facts or whatever. Like, I feel like I I see creators like Osmond Gold do that a lot where they're like, well, I can't help that I'm right. Well, I can't help that this is just facts. And then it's like a wildly subjective statement about gender dynamics or what certain types of people would like about certain types of entertainment or other things like that that is not substantiated by any kind of statistics or citing of sources it's just like talking out your ass <laughs> yeah and and then these uh, there's a lot of people who take that as like fact like well i saw it on youtube and this person said this so it must be true that's the how the world works when it's this really delusional version of the world and especially depending upon the person and the streamer it can really have a more problematic and or misogynistic and or fill in the blank problematic lens um and it just i feel like and then you bring in collaborations and then it creates that pipeline i was talking about in the beginning this like okay you start out as a gamer you're just watching content about your favorite shiny dopamine filled game and then you start feeling disenfranchised because all these people are commenting about boo women or this or that or whatever and then you see your favorite content creator start to collaborate with people who have more and more extreme viewpoints. And then you're looking at situations like Aiden Rocks and Ross and XQC hanging out with Trump. And it's a direct connection to politics and to like, hey, you should be like believing this perspective. And it's just this like slippery slope of indoctrination almost, it seems like, depending upon the circles. I'm sorry. That was a little bit of yeah. a monologue there. I <laughs> got a little fixated. That's great. But yeah, that, that is that absolutely. And and thus the comment of gamer to incel pipeline being fed by these quote unquote fake neutral. I'm saying quote and quoting myself. <laughs> fake neutral kind of creators that aren't making definitive political statements but are collaborating with individuals who are and just funnels people to this angsty like um radicalized communities yeah uh this is totally random and about the game. And, but... and then, and then w- b- before they even know what happened, they're, uh, they're in a hate group. Well, yeah. Or, you know, they're making jokes that you would find in those communities. Like, that's what usually comedy I have found is one of, I don't mean comedy in the industry sense. I mean comedy in, like, the personal humor sense (laughs) is is one of the easiest ways for people to slowly ease others into their extremist ideologies they just slowly make like more and more kind of making fun of others sarcasm other ironic based irony based humor and things like that with these twisted perspectives and then you slowly radicalize the limits um just like any coercive situation you're slowly increasing um the intensity right and then suddenly you turn around you're like how did i get in this cult of hatred (laughs) or whatever (laughs) um and maybe you don't believe that you started out actually believing that extreme of a perspective and maybe you didn't so people can justify well i don't believe this or that when they're behaving as if they do and i might be being a little dramatic with my phrasing but you know it's it's part of the um deny and uh blame cycle of like not even admitting to what is ha- happening right in in 
in front of them. Yeah. Well, I also think it's kind of like a, a little bit of a broad social version of like the concept of that Darbo um, concept, which is like deny, yes. reverse yeah, that. Um, victim and offender, I think, or something like that. And it's this idea that, but it's a really subtle version of that where they already set up the narrative of being attacked. I mean, I feel like we can see that even in what was that awesome Osmond Gold title from the other day? They don't want me to exist. <laughs> like that's a dramatic statement that's pretty clickbaity and other things like that. And and that sets up this narrative in your audience that there's people out to get him. <laughs> well, it also right. falls into that sort of like cancel culture yeah. and and then cancel culture is also associated with very leftist views when realistically a lot of it is tied to like accountability and and not behaving in a toxic like exploitative manner well because one of the biggest pro proponents of that dialogue was someone that was in power trump yeah and and like men that are already vulnerable to being preyed upon don't have the foresight to see that they're being manipulated or they have money and are okay with that because they also want to get away with some stuff that they shouldn't be getting away with. Yeah, it's kind of hard not to, like, you want to give the benefit of the doubt and assume people are maybe being, like, ignorant or arrogant or any number of like maybe unintentionally promoting these things but realistically at a certain point like um how much do you profit from a thing before you get called out for supporting that thing <laughs> i don't know i think that there's a certain point where depending upon the demographic of the person too like they kind of just want to show their true colors and believe what they want to believe and Take down whoever wants to believe in them with them. I don't know. Maybe it's dramatic, but I think that one of the the frustrating things for me is that these content creators that we're talking about that are really divisive and really, in my personal opinion, pretty toxic in their rhetoric. Uh, are pushed a lot as uh, you know they're on trending pages they've got millions of subscribers they're growing like yes there have been some repercussions for individuals like dr disrespect being demonetized but like it's still kind of limited in the sense in the sense of like there's not a balance of um positive content of, of people trying to strengthen community not just build a little i don't know cesspool to stew in with others people like to complain i yeah, like to rather than i don't know putting forth putting forth effort to change the things that they that that are important and i i think that what is important um is pretty shallow in 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 the minds of some of these people because it's i don't know they they haven't had the the chance to see something greater beyond themselves yeah um or they benefit from the narrative yeah i mean if you make tons of money <laughs> putting out content that uh reiterates rhetoric that that's basically just gasoline on a fire that's already raging well especially when you know i think that there's a lot of recently there's been a lot of creators and i would say in the last year or so that i've been seeing um calling out some of these creators for making react content and not just you know pouring this kind of questionable rhetoric on to their audience, but also just doing it in a way that 
doesn't really build the creator community either. It kind of scalps from it instead. And I think that it's the combination of all of the behaviors together that makes the problematic situation. Uh, I mean, obviously each behavior choice in particular is questionable and, and problematic, but like when they're doing all the things and they've got these big audiences and like, um, Sorry, I'm moving a lot of pieces around. Give me a second. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of uh, spaced out what I was actually doing in the <laughs> game, and I just kind of autopiloted my turn while we were, oh while we were talking. Uh, sometimes civilization is kind of like doing a puzzle while we're talking about this stuff. <laughs> in two turns, I'll have a harbor, which will give me a boost for the. Era. I am not boosting my cities very well. I need a third city. I I don't think that any of the 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 people that we're talking about are are gonna watch this. By the way, <laughs> well, no, I, neither do I. I'm gonna continue <laughs> on living my life as if that's now probably not gonna happen because this is a really long. I mean, I'm, we're not calling them names. I don't think they're bad people. I think they're making some questionable choices. I'd say that to their face. <laughs> I think good people make questionable choices all the time. Oh, yes. I don't think that that makes them bad people. I think that makes them human. And I think that the, the problem is that they're not receptive to... Um, concepts of community because some of these people have endured some trauma that they're not willing to talk about. Most likely. Um, that they just bottle up. And honestly, just get a therapist. <laughs> Don't take it out on your audience. Stop. Get, get some, some help. help. <laughs> seriously just talk with some someone that's not going to judge you for that because the problem is if these people have trauma and then they have trauma around sharing because they shared with a guy that that then turned around and made fun of them for that or just said i don't want to hear that or you know any number of any the number of stereotype rhetoric that the, we see in the comment section of these of this content that we're talking about <laughs> the wrong thing yeah well it's, the it's reason... invalidating right yeah and i think that you know there's this kind of like <clears throat> idea that it's somehow unmanly or or weak or which i would also like to note that there's also usually a correlation of feminine and weak but that's kind of a, a whole nother issue which we don't have to get into <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but there is usually this association with um, like expressing one's needs and emotions in a healthy way as being seen as, as somehow weak or less than um, than someone who like keeps it all inside until they rage out and punch a punch a wall or something like that and do something even more toxic. And, and I just, it has always boggled my mind the, the, the lack of logic behind that rhetoric. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Well, it, because again, the, the, I, I think I just uh, realized why. Uh, because <laughs> Epiphany. A, again, um, other men gaslight other men for having um, these experiences. Oh yeah, absolutely. As, and, and invalidate those those experiences um, hmm. in so many different ways. That I, I I I don't want to present examples because it's it's a pretty heinous thing to do that. Yeah. So, I, I think that probably most people have experienced something that they can kind of relate to that with. Absolutely. The benefit of mental health and mental plasticity um, 
it is um, exponential. Like, yeah, you talk. Some people talk about gains as being super important. <laughs> <clears throat> Mentally, that's that's how you can grow is by uh, embracing uncomfortable truths about oneself and the world as as a whole and getting some therapy to deal with the fact that those things are beyond your control. Yeah. Absolutely. And using the power that you do have for good and growth and, and positivity, not spreading messages of hate and i think that that's or even just messages of belittlement yeah right? like i mean look at just the humor that some of these people decide to engage in it can be extremely um dehumanizing especially depending upon the subgroup that they're making humor about and the thing is i i i think people don't understand that like in order to normalize these things, it, it takes really slow, steady progress. And that's what I'm seeing now is slow, steady progress. And it has been growing for a long time. And maybe it's just becoming apparent to some people now, or maybe down the road, um, it, it becomes more obvious to, to people, but it's it's a growing problem and it's going to continue to grow and get worse in time if if more people don't stand up and talk about it yeah so i think that that's why it's important for us um as content creators to say something about it regardless of our reach regardless of whether or not I agree. A ton of people are going to see this or if it's just going to be a few people. Because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. The reach that we have. Because the, the funny thing it is... It needs to be said regardless. Yeah, the funny thing is these people talk about censorship feeling like they're not. They're they're being censored. They're they're being told <laughs> that they can't say certain things. When in, in reality, uh, their stuff is being pushed in the algorithm more so than people that are talking about the the counterpoints that are important and usually the only time anyone is actually being quote unquote canceled or demonetized something like that is when there's actually like a social re like pretty intense social request for that and that's usually based off of pretty intensely inappropriate behavior and so it kind of blows my mind when the rhetoric is like boo i can't say what i want when realistically they say exactly what they want all the time and people believe it and take it as fact especially children young adults who like i'm talking probably 19 and under who are fans of these individuals are taking what they say as essentially gospel and falling down this rabbit hole while they're sitting there going, oh, I'm not that popular. And I don't know, I think that it's pretty egregious sometimes, um, depending upon what's being said. Um, I, I mean, mean, I can say that and it's true. Huh? Right now. I can say that and it's true right now. I'm not a, a famous person. <laughs> like, I don't have a big following. I, I This is a small channel. Well, yeah, we're, we're under just, 2K. We're just regular people. They're under three million. Those or are also they're also not. business owners. Yeah. And they make a lot of money. Yeah. So of course they're going to be um, on multiple platforms. In, on yeah. the conservative side because it's it's how they make more money. The, the Republican Party is the party of business. Generally speaking, yeah. I think that it's a little fractured right now, but that might be a yeah. topic for another stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, I have a lot of mixed feeling. I feel like every three to five business days, we're hearing about another creator that's done something questionable, heinous, or otherwise just generally ethically questionable um, <laughs> in the last like five years. And in I'm the like, time why? it takes for a package to be delivered. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Brought to you by UPS. <laughs> Your dignity. Um, <laughs> sorry. So I just, I don't know. Like, it's not just the gaming and streaming communities that no. have questionable choices being made by their creators. I just want to make a note of that. Like, we see that there, it is beyond it is a overarching issue of people behaving in questionable manners when they have an audience being unaware or intentionally neglectful of the fact that they have an influence and, and a power over people um especially young people who are usually pretty vulnerable and could be in exponentially vulnerable cases depending upon their particular intersectionality and and i think that um i know some of these creators would probably roll their eyes at me for even using the word intersectionality we could sound it out intersectionality um sorry i just want to be annoying uh <laughs> But I think that it, it is an overarching attitude, right? Like, do you want to be aware of other people's needs as an individual? Do you want to be the type of, I don't know, friend, employer, employee, coworker, whatever, that's aware of the people that they spend time with in a mindful manner? Um, and I'm not saying, you know, everyone has to be a people pleaser. Obviously, that's not healthy. But, you know, being aware of other people's needs is not inherently... Uh, and, and needs include mental health, well-being, et cetera, um, does not inherently mean that, you know, you're, like, <laughs> caving to them or letting them walk all over you or anything like that, as long as you're, you know, also being a good person. And, like, I think that there's so much exaggeration and catastrophizing of like anything that requires any emotional intelligence <laughs> like <gasps> what you want me to be mindful of myself oh <gasps> clutch the pearls <laughs> headphones whatever i just there's no one that's going to and 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 for the record i i think that you know I, Everyone should be allowed to share their their opinion, but at what point is that opinion actually destructive? When like the some of these people say some really outrageous things that are super clickbaity, and it's like they're a reality TV star. When the people that they're interacting with, they're really directly interacting <laughs> with these people. It's you know, there's some separation when there's a TV there, but like you're. It's more than just even answering calls on like a radio show, you know? I think that especially, <clears throat> you see it a lot with like um, Twitch streamers, I feel like. <laughs> There's a lot of like interactive responding to chat, especially, I mean, when you bring in the concept of super chats and other things like that, right? People paying money to have their chat viewed which, which I mean, I just want to, okay, actually, I would like to just set this a subject aside here really quick and just say, is it, is, and this is a question, actually, maybe people listening can put in the comments what they think. Is it hypocritical to have a feature on your streams where people can use money to upvote, essentially, their content so you will read their stuff by, by putting money on your comment? while complaining about games that quote unquote use predatory in-game purchases is that not kind of the same concept that you can do an in-stream purchase to make your response be seen by this person that encourages a, a weird level to parallel parallel parasocial <laughs> forgot what words were for a second um but like that feeds off of the parasocial relationship yeah. and encourages people to spend money to engage with that relationship just like fortnite selling cool outfits in their shop <clears throat> and i'm not defending fortnite or any other company for using in-game purchases i have my own issues with that but i just think that there's some hypocrisy irony fill in the blank what words you want to use in kind of demonizing game development companies who choose to use that feature while having a similar 
kind of feature in your very own streams. I don't know. Is that, you know, kind of um, a, a hip sense of hypocrisy in and of itself? And that's just my opinion, but I mean, I could be wrong. I totally mean, open to argument. <laughs> paying to push your opinion is advertising, right? It's yeah, just it's another place to, to purchase your statement. And having someone then read it live on air somewhere makes it more true to people because the thing with psychology is that it's a placebo effect. You say something enough times, it becomes it becomes the truth. Well, especially like, if that person is really, in your opinion, really famous and is reading your thing on stream and then is agreeing with your statement. And no matter how out there the statement may be, yeah, then that reinforces to other people who are thinking similar things, oh, well, then they would probably agree with this other opinion that I have. And I just think it's this very slippery slope, um, like kind of like what we were talking about before with the like manosphere rhetoric, feeding on people's need for community while kind of charging them for engagement, whether that be through social currency of humiliation or other things like that, or through actual currency like Super Chats. Um, and, and really, you know, I don't really necessarily have a problem with Super Chats per se. It's the idea that the same person who would have Super Chats on their platforms would also complain about in-game purchases or other things like that, which I feel like I've heard across a lot of different things as like, being a downside to games that have that aspect to them which i don't really i'm not taking a stance on whether or not i like in-game purchases on games it's the hypocrisy of the statement for me. yeah by the way just to clarify absolutely <laughs> like the hypocrisy of the, the i know how sound bites work <laughs> the reaction to the most desired job in the Oh, in yeah. the United States being being a, a streamer. A, a, and that's something to be laughed at when you are a content creator slash streamer. That's weird. Um, for anyone who's not aware, we're referencing an Osmond Gold video. <laughs> yeah. This was an Osmond Gold a video. A React video to... Um, I'm not sure exactly what he was reacting to, but it had to do with a statistic of what the most popular career high school age kids um i'm not sure what the age was yeah uh kids in the in the in china the most desired job is being a uh an astronaut whereas here it's being a streamer being right a streamer. that's what it was saying. that was the comparison right 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 that's what he was saying um, um and just totally ragging on kids and the interest of being a streamer which is ridiculous when you've made millions of dollars off being a streamer. Yeah. Like that feels like climbing up a ladder and then burning it behind you and being like, oh, why would you want to climb up that ladder anyway? That's stupid then, to want to climb up that ladder that I just climbed up. And then making the statement that even if you're in the 1%, you might as well just give up now because you'll never be where I'm at. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> you'll never sounds. get here. That is how it Cause sounds. Because you're, you're chopping up the way to get there. Yeah. Like you're 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 completely diminishing psychologically how. Uh, because you could build people up. Yeah. But instead, to to diminish and to, uh, God, that guy must be a nightmare to work with. <laughs> and he won't ever work for one of his businesses feel free to share your experience <laughs> just gonna throw that out there because uh, why not unless it's just an act in which case it's it's kind of grifting I mean yeah that is so that is a question. <laughs> it is a question. Yes, it is. And all, all of this is just speculation. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, I, I am living with the expectation that none of these people are going to watch this, sure. listen to this, or even get this far if they do. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, absolutely. I just, <clears throat> I think that, I guess my hope, since we're still kind of new at this, is that we can create a, a little bit of a different community that is a, a space where people can enjoy gaming and enjoy each other's time and, and perspectives and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, maybe that's a little sentimental of me, but... I think one of the biggest things that we're missing in in this day and age in in, in experience is community as a as a whole. Yes. You know the 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 reason why I think that these viewpoints are starting to fester is because people are too separated. Yeah. Um, you need to interact with people of uh, other other viewpoints in order to really. Um, gain some perspective because if you just live within your tiny little bubble you're you're not going to improve as a as a as a person in in terms of uh understanding in, in terms of how you could view the world yeah and what <clears throat> how much better you can leave the world as a person well, and also, doesn't that also, <laughs> wow, good sentence. Um, <laughs> isn't there some aspect of self-fulfillment that comes from that too? Like, you know, it's okay to enjoy helping others. There, there can be some self-growth that comes from wanting to make a better space um, <clears throat> where other people can also enjoy things that you've enjoyed or people can... Um, share what they feel they need to share and be heard and all those different things and have you know like people can have whatever politics or perspectives that they have if these streamers want to personally have those viewpoints I couldn't really care less like what they on a daily basis feel about themselves or the world it's when you start using those perspectives to behave in a way that puts your audience or other people's audiences in jeopardy or just the world in jeopardy kind of in my personal opinion with the the next couple of couple months and i think that you know when you start to kind of preach your perspective to others well crapping on anyone who tries to do better, um, belittling those who care about anything in some cases. <laughs> I think it just, um, like, what does it add to the space and, and how... Chaos. Chaos. <laughs> like I'm saying, like, I'm not space. trying to say they can't have their perspectives. Like, that's fine. Believe what you want to believe. But when you're using it to to manipulate people it starts to get a little questionable like why shouldn't people say something right you got a million people that are telling you you're right one person telling you you're wrong shouldn't matter right yeah if you're me <laughs> like if, unless it's a sensitive subject <laughs> and it, it, and if you're just making a joke then make it more clear that it's a joke and i mean there could even be an argument for you know i, I comedy is one of those comedy is subjective and everyone makes jokes for different reasons kind of thing i don't really want to touch on because nah. but i am never us. personally going to be a fan of comedy that belittles others and i think that when yeah. your standard is to find ways to belittle others in your dialogue and your humor i think it just shows your standard palette of colors <laughs> like who you are on a regular basis is what ends up coming out for most people in their um in their humor especially unless they're trying intentionally to shock people which i yeah you know, i guess is totally possible um but it gets views yeah, it does. Gets, Discourse gets, pe gets views. Gets people hate watching too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, you know, I mean, some of this is uh, 
what's that line from Pirates of the Caribbean? Where he's like, you're the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Ah, but you have heard of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there's some of that, like, no, no. Are we comparing? Are we comparing Osmongold to Jack Sparrow? No, he will never be that cool. <laughs> Jack, Jack Sparrow is his own version of problematic, sure, but. He tried to make the right choices at times. Osmond Gold likes to watch the word world burn, it seems like. In my personal opinion, allegedly. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the... I'll acknowledge my bias. <laughs> I, I think it's fair. I think I got distracted. <laughs> yeah, I got a little... <laughs> a little fixated on that turn. There was a lot going on. Admittedly, we have uh, been going a lot longer than we normally do this round. <laughs> yeah. This this particular broadcast, too. We've had a lot to talk about. We have a lot. We, we got big opinions on on these things. <laughs> we So we've... I, I think we've reached a threshold of how much of this uh, uh, garbage we can keep talking about. But... Uh, just want to say thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you for sharing all of your opinions. Uh, if you have more opinions to share, you're welcome to... And... Share them in the comments. Yeah, share them. We will check them before the next stream. Absolutely. And with that, uh, have a great day and stay safe. Have a good one.